everyone. My name is Hannah Bothner, and I am the short film program director for Tallgrass Film Festival. Today, we are here with Frankie and Gracia, um, with who is the director and writer of the film Detach. Hi, Frankie. Thank you so much for being here. Hi. Thank you for having me. Um, well, I want to immediately start getting into your film because I find it's such a fascinating from like start to finish. Where is this going? You know, what's happening? Type of film. I want to know where the inspiration for it came. And then I also specifically want to know what made you want to focus on a mother daughter relationship? Um, I feel like we see this kind of, you know, outgrowing your friends type of thing a lot, but this is very specifically like this mother daughter weird dynamic. Um, so I, I want to know what made you specifically choose that relationship? Well, I grew up actually as a child actor in Los Angeles and had a very enmeshed relationship with my own mother. She's still one of my best friends. Um, and she's an artist. And when it's just the two of you, 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 your dynamics and your roles sort of shift. And it wasn't just me. I noticed the other girls I would meet doing what I was doing had similar relationships with their mothers. Um, and it kind of became my world growing up was other daughters of single mothers working in the industry. And it, it becomes this weird sort of sister dynamic where you're constantly, you know, working on your look and the clothes and, you know, the, the whole aesthetic together. Yeah. Everything is yeah. together. And then when I met Luna, the lead actress, she was only seven or eight. And I met her oh, because wow. I was friends with her mother. And as she grew up, I watched them become very familiar <laughs> to that dynamic. Her mom is her, her manager and um, they are very, very close. And her mom reached out to me during the hiatus of Manifest and said, we want to do something different with Luna. Do you have any ideas? And um, I had gone back to school for psychology and was doing a lot of um, research on this thing called the dark triad, which I didn't talk enough about in the film, but I should have. But basically it's a psychological test um, where you're looking for these three defects of personality. Um, Machiavellianism, sociopathology, and um, narcissism. <laughs> yeah. and the perfect storm that those three create has become a phenomenon in the social media world. Mm -hmm. Because now to get kind of nerdy and scientific with you, um, we have never seen the rise of those three traits uh, get expressed within ourselves as fast as they are now because of social media. So, you know, you have these traits that are dormant when they're shamed, but when they're rewarded, they're expressed faster, correct? Mm -hmm. So um, there was, you know, some awful stories in the news where people were um, live streaming some acts of violence, right. right? And they couldn't stop their behavior because the more likes and the more interaction, the more fueled it becomes. And there was this one story on Periscope with this young girl who was videotaping her friend being raped. I don't know if you saw this, it's an, an awful true story, but she couldn't stop because the the dopamine addiction right. so she couldn't even help her friend because she was so engaged with this that this didn't matter anymore and then there was one where there was a snapchat filter of speed and this girl was on the highway uh -huh. and the faster and faster and faster she went the more interaction she was getting oh, wow. she ended up going right off the highway crashing into someone and the minute she came to in the hospital, the first thing she did was go back to the phone. So this, this interaction has created this new thing. And mm -hmm. I wanted to explore that. So somewhere in between the parent 
mother daughter dynamic and this social media fear I have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was where I kind of just started to brainstorm on detach. Um, and without giving anything away, I didn't want it to be too on the head. So I didn't give it away what the ending really is. Right. It's up right. to your interpretation. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's always a really fascinating way to end things. But what... Were, did you know from the start that you wanted to include these moments of straight to the camera? We're seeing like what the viewer would see um, the the lead character uh, posting. Did you know from the start that you wanted to include both both the elements of the in the phone world and in the real world? Well, yeah, because she lived more through the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, than she does in the present. I mean, her and her mom both are disconnected and detached right. from each other. I mean, right. as enmeshed as they are, they're actually living through their devices. Um, and, and through that, I think my daughter character sort of has no attachment to consequence. Mm -hmm. So no, ro no remorse, no guilt. It's yeah. just, um, yeah, just like it's almost like what's happening in real life isn't actually happening in real life for her. Right. And 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 because people are still liking her and telling her she's pretty, that's all that sort of matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't have to deal with the consequences. She just she's getting the the dopamine as you were right. as yeah. you know, the psychology tells us. And then I, you know, I had that moment where you really see the switch when she puts the wig on where it's mm -hmm. like that's when she kind of decides this world doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. This world. This yes. Is yeah. Well, I think it's fascinating. I, I, the, um, you know, child actor, the, the, the momager, the, um, that kind of thing, because I think a lot of the film is also about control. Um, and yeah. you know, who has the control and taking back control. And, um, and I think that, that really intertwines too with the idea of of our social media we are able to control the image that we put out into the world too um and you know she at the end she controls the story too of what yeah. happened yeah so i think that there's a lot of um interesting elements of control in this too that it totally makes sense that it's coming from this psychology background too <laughs> well it's funny you should say that because as you say that i i hear you know there is this weird thing that happens between especially child actors with mother and daughter because when the child becomes the breadwinner mm. that who is in the alpha position shifts right Right. So the child does become the more controlling figure. And um, in their situation, in the, in the short, she's an influencer and the mother is feeding off of her financial life. So there is, yeah, there's a control game happening between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's really sick. The woman that helped me produce it, she um, wants to do it as a feature. Mm -hmm. And so we've been exploring these different avenues of where it can go and, you know, all this, but it is a lot about the audience. Yeah, that, that would be very fascinating as a feature for sure. There's yeah. a lot to explore there. Yeah, it's a lot of yucky stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, where so you talked to? <laughs> we'll choose the subject. <laughs> I don't know how I wrote that thing. I literally finished writing it. I was like, "What just came out of my brain? Like, what is wrong? Like, what have I done?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So you yeah. talked about how you found, or rather, sort of that your uh, the daughter found you um, in this uh, to to you know create this film, but how did you find the mother? 
Mercedes. Oh my gosh. That's so crazy. So, uh, Luna's real mom, uh, mm-hmm. like I said, is a friend of mine. And I was telling her the concept and I had originally just written the monologue at the end and it was much longer. And, it, and I was sort of going to develop the short around the monologue. And, um, she was like, I just went to this party a week ago and this actress walked in and I went, Oh my God, you look like my daughter. Whoa. <laughs> because I can't get over how much you look like my daughter. And she goes, I need you to meet this director because she's doing this film about mother daughters. And so, um, we all went out to lunch and I, that then me and Luna and Mercedes sort of separated and went on our own journey. And they did have this natural, I mean, they look very similar and then they had this natural banter, you know, which was what I wanted. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. That's such a wild happenstance. (laughs) Well, the whole, to be honest with you, the whole short, like I said, came together in a, one of those sort of magical moments because I didn't have any funding for it. Mm -hmm. So to the filmmakers out there, um, I think I did this literally for nothing. Wow. Favors, you know, uh, because everybody just wanted to be, once Luna came in, everybody wanted to be Mm -hmm. a part. And then everything was sort of donated or soft money favors, um, which was amazing. We shot the whole thing in a day. Absolutely. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Was it, were you in an actual like hotel room or, um, I mean, I know that it seems like they're staying there, but I don't know if it was kind of a hotel room or like an Airbnb situation or. The friend of mine's Airbnb. Oh, awesome. So donated it. Nice. Yeah, that was in Venice. Um, yeah, but the whole idea was like, maybe they were at Coachella. Uh-huh. Some music festival, Airbnb-ish kind of. Right. Con- yeah. Yeah, we, I think it was 13 was the last time. I saw any real mother daughter. And then there was that really creepy movie about Munchausen's where the mom was trying to keep the daughter sick, but that's a little different. Yeah. Based on the true story, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah enough of it. Mother daughters are a huge part of our lives. Absolutely. Like, there yeah. should be more. Yeah. And all of these different stories, I think they, there's so many complicated relationships, you know mother daughter wise and yeah so many stories um what what do you want people to take away the most for, uh, after watching this film um well i'm back in school again uh-huh. getting another masters in psychology and i i think that um every day i'm learning more and more about like the harm of technology. Mm-hmm. And I am really worried about the youth and the generation of selfies and social media. And I, I do I do think there is a detachment and a lack of remorse mm-hmm. that that is arising that we need to be aware of. You know, yeah. it's weird because it connects us in one space. Mm-hmm. So you're creating empathy by seeing what's going on overseas and all over the world. But then on the other side, it's not real. It's right. Still- yeah. You're getting all of this different type of media. So it's hard to separate it all, I guess. Yeah. You're and using I think the same everybody- screen to watch narratives yeah. versus real things. Yeah. Exactly. So the brain is overloaded with how do I filter what's real and what's not and then you know we're all talking about body issues and and the comparison and just pure depression and happiness and all that stuff but like no one's talking about what it's actually doing to our uh DNA yeah absolutely. and it, it's actually shifting our genetics and that stuff I think I need I I, I wish I would have hit a little bit more about that Mm -hmm. because I think that was my bigger point like hey we need to be aware maybe for the future 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, that was part of the thing we were breaking down was how do we in include that because mm -hmm. there was also this really weird creepy story about this kid who found a parent just a true story found a parent who had supposedly fallen and had passed and wow. instead of calling the police first he created a series of um selfie videos talking wow. about his experience um and he kept correcting himself and sort of reshooting it so that opened the opening of detached was the uh -huh. idea it was like she was preparing for how right wanted the audience to perceive what had happened um but that's crazy yeah i think you would do that first yeah yeah instead of helping right calling someone yeah i mean think about that can't that's imagine what, yeah, I mean, so that was actually Luna's idea because she knew about that story. Oh, wow. And she wanted to sort of cross reference them. So, yeah, absolutely. So uh, final question for you, other than trying to turn this into a feature, is there anything else that you're working on or anything else that we can, um, that you can point people towards where they can follow you or find you online? Speaking yeah, of online. I, have, I have a website, frankieagracia.com. And then um, as an actor, I'm in a movie called One Moment where I play Danny Aiello's um, daughter. It's his last oh, awesome. And that that's doing the festival circuit right now. It should be coming out cool. soon, I think. And then um uh yeah, that that's about it. I'm like I said, back in school trying to nerd out some more. Incredible. Well, I mean, obviously something very awesome and and well done came out of it so we'll I guess we'll see what what you come up with next from, from your psychology classes and yeah the I, I think it's yeah thank you I really appreciate that thank you so much for seeing in it what I wanted you to I really I mean that's feels so awesome to be yeah. appreciated so thank you and I know my whole team thanks the whole festival and we're all so grateful to be a part of it really it's like means a lot. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today and thank you for your film. And I want to thank all of you out there for watching and for supporting Tallgrass.